Shadow Slave. By Guilty Three. Chapter 88 Boat Builders. Trying to gather his courage, Sonny looked into the distance and said in a raspy voice, You've seen the creatures that dwell under these waves. Do you really want to swim across them? Changing Star was silent for a few seconds, then sighed. We are damned either way, Sonny. What do we have to lose? She fell silent for a moment and grimaced, pale flames dancing in her eyes. Then, in a quiet voice, she added, We will not light any fires, relying on your eyes to guide us west. We will hope that Cassie's armor will protect us. Maybe it will be enough. Sonny glanced at Neff and asked, What's so special about Cassie's armor? She hesitated for a moment, then answered without looking at him, It's a tier 6 awakened memory. One of its traits is to make the wearer less likely to draw the enemy's attention. While Sunny was digesting this information, Nephi suddenly trembled. Closing her eyes, she said through gritted teeth, I am at my limit. My mind is. Fading. If you have any questions left. Better. Ask them fast. He blinked, startled. Then, knowing that there was not much time left, Sunny asked the first thing that came to his mind, do you even know how to build a boat? Changing Star simply nodded, letting him know that she did. Her expression was slowly turning lost and dull again. Racing against time, Sunny frantically thought of another question. How do I convince you to leave the island once your memory is gone? Nephi's looked at him, struggling to hold onto the last shreds of lucidity. For a moment, her eyes became clear again. White flames ignited in their depths, illuminating her pale, beautiful face. Aster. Song. Veil. Say those words to me, and I will listen. Starting to lose the grip on her thoughts, she turned away and added after a short pause, her voice steady and even, if anything happens, take Cassie and flee. Don't. Don't. Then, the light in her eyes slowly dimmed, and soon, changing star was staring west once again, all memory of their conversation gone from her mind. Sunny sat by her side for some time, waiting. After a while, he shifted a little and said, Hey, Neff. She turned to him, her face bleak and full of confusion. Sonny. Oh. When did you get here? A while ago. Then, he smiled and said in a carefree tone, Hey, can I ask you something? Do you know how to build a boat? Nephi's was very surprised by his question, but eventually agreed to help him. Sonny didn't tell her why exactly he wanted to build a boat, dodging the questions with practiced finesse. His flaw was not making things easy, but with the state Neff was in, persuading her was not very hard. Manipulating her felt a little strange, but explaining everything once again would have taken too much time. Not to mention that he wasn't sure that it would work again. And there was not much time left. With every hour, their condition worsened. Even Sonny was having trouble keeping his lucidity intact. Every time he felt that his mind was beginning to slip, he had to inflict pain on himself to get a few moments of reprieve. Even so, his thoughts were slow and fragile. Keeping them together was taking a heavy toll on him. They had to flee the island as soon as possible. Sonny was determined to be ready by the time the Dark Sea returned. Turning away from Nephi's to not let her see the pained expression on his face, Sonny bit his hand once again. Feeling the bitter taste of blood on his tongue, he let the wave of pain clear his mind and blinked, amused at the irony of the situation. He was gnawing on himself to prevent himself from being eaten. What a funny contradiction. Hiding his bleeding hand behind his back, Sonny turned to Neff and asked, So, how are we going to make the boat? She thought about it for some time, then said indifferently, We will have to use the materials at hand. For the hull, we will have to use the dead demon's carapace. We can strip several armor plates of suitable shape and tie them together with the golden rope. Sonny raised his eyebrows, the. The carapace demon's armor. It's made out of some strange steel. Can steel even float? Nephi's glanced at him with reproach. Anything can float, Sonny. You just have to make sure that you're displacing more water than the weight of the floating object. That's how boats work. He blinked. Ah. Okay. About the sail, I think we can ask Cassie to lend us her cloak. What do you think? Changing Star gave him a strange look. I mean. Yes. 
I still don't understand what got you so excited about boat building, but I'm sure she'll be willing to help you out with this. Ah. Uh. Passion project. Sunny smiled. Great. Let's go butcher the demon, then. A strange sentence to say with a smile, but not the strangest one he had to say to convince Neff to help him. A few minutes later, they reached the giant carcass of the carapace demon. It was towering above them like a small hill of polished metal. After that first day when the strange winged abominations had circled around the island for several hours, never daring to approach, nothing else had shown up to lay claim to the fearsome creature's meat. As the result, the carcass was largely intact. Strangely, the demon's corpse had not begun to rot. Only the metal of its carapace slowly deteriorated, losing its luster and shine, then turning less and less durable. By now, its surface was marred by large patches of rust. Nephi's climbed up on top of the carcass and walked from side to side, looking under her feet. Then, she gestured at several spots, these curved plates will be perfect if we can fit them together tight enough. Each one is long enough to form the entirety of the hull, leaving enough space for the three of us to sit side by side. Sonny had no knowledge of shipbuilding, so he decided to trust her judgment. Looking up from the ground, he asked, what about the mast? Changing star scowled. That. I will have to think about. Sonny smiled. All right. While you're thinking, I'll go fetch Cassie to keep you company. Chapter 89, Demon's Bones. Sonny had a lot to do before the sunset. The parts of the plan spun in his head, making it ache. He had to constantly remain focused, straining his will to its limits, just to keep himself from forgetting everything. When it was not enough, he had to use pain to augment his concentration. His hands and arms were covered in ghastly bite marks. Without the blood weave, Sonny might have fainted from blood loss already. Still, with his pale face turning even whiter from exhaustion and feverish light burning in his eyes, he must have looked like a zombie. Luckily, Cassie couldn't see any of it. It didn't take much to convince her to join their strange endeavor. The blind girl's state was way worse than his or Neff's. She seemed to be barely holding on, her thoughts slow and meek. Sonny's heart was gripped with worry. Why is she affected so much more than us? Is it because we have true names, but she does not? Names were anchors of one sense of self, after all. Could it be that true names served a similar role, only in matters having to do with the spell? He didn't know. Sonny guided Cassie to the carcass of the carapace demon. Nephi's was already busy stripping plates of armor from its back. Her silver sword was seemingly able to cut through the deteriorated metal, making the task not as hard as he had been afraid of. Gently sitting the blind girl down in a spot where Neff could see her, he climbed atop the dead demon and evaluated the progress of changing Star's work. She looked at him with a frown, aren't you going to help? This was your idea, after all. Sonny shrugged. Maybe later. You seem to be enjoying yourself, anyway. Some people might say that it's a fun little project to chase the boredom away, right? She blinked a couple of times, then said, I guess. Sonny nodded a couple of times, looking down at the spots where, stripped of armor plates, the demon's flesh was laid bare. The azure blood had coagulated, turning it dark and as hard as stone. Here and there, though, white layers of fat remained in pristine condition. Actually, I have another project in mind. Nephi's raised an eyebrow. Oh really? Sonny summoned his sword and stepped closer to the gap in the creature's armor. Yeah. I want to make a candle. Saying those words, he began to cut, separating the fat from the hardened muscle tissue. Neff blinked a few times and then looked at Cassie. Hey, Cass. Has Sonny lost his mind? The blind girl perked up at the sound of her name. Ah. Ah. I'm not sure. I think he's just bored. Sonny concentrated on his task, not paying them any attention. For a moment, he entertained the idea of cutting himself with the Midnight Shard's razor-sharp blade, but then dismissed it. Cutting through the puppeteer's shroud would have been really hard, and he couldn't dismiss the armor in front of the girls. Well. To be more precise, he didn't want to. With a sizable chunk of the demon's fat in his hands, Sonny jumped down from the carcass and landed on a pile of fallen leaves. Making a candle out of animal fat was not very hard. He just needed fire, water, and time. The wick could be made out of seaweed fibers. 
It was not going to be pretty, but he didn't care about aesthetics. Leaving Nephi's and Cassie behind, Sonny rushed back to their camp. The sun was already high in the sky. He spent the rest of the day doing two things, watching over the process of making the candle and running around the island, gathering as much fallen leaves as he could. From time to time, he would catch a glimpse of Nephi's working on the boat, sometimes instructing Cassie to help her with menial tasks. From what he could see, the boat was coming along nicely. Changing Star knew what she was doing. Of course, this was only possible because he had convinced her that this was just something he wanted to do for fun. In the girls knew that Sonny was planning to use the boat to escape the Ashen Barrow, the effects of enthrallment would have kept erasing their memories of the task, making finishing it impossible. As it stood, Sonny was the only one who knew the true purpose of the boat. That's why he was forced to bear the full weight of Soul Tree's mind corruption alone. He felt as though he was about to drop dead of exhaustion. His head felt like it was filled with molten iron. His vision was starting to become blurry. But, stubbornly, Sonny refused to give up. No matter how tired he was, how much he wanted to let go and ease the suffering, returning to the bliss of not knowing, he kept his thoughts on one goal, and one goal only. Escaping the clutches of the soul devourer. Finally, with the evening approaching, the boat was ready. Looking like a walking corpse, Sonny slowly approached the demon's carcass, which was now cut open and sliced apart. It was as though a mad vivisector had visited the island to perform an autopsy on the giant and forgot to sew the poor creature back up. Nephi's looked at him with concern. Sonny. Are you alright? Giving her a crooked smile, he shrugged. I'm fine. Comparatively. He did not specify what exactly he was comparing his current condition to. Turning his head, Sonny looked at the boat with dark satisfaction. It was. Not how he had imagined it. The hull was made out of curved plates of polished metal, with sharp spikes protruding from them in all directions. The plates were held together by the golden rope that was tied tightly around them. Changing Star had managed to make the gaps between the different parts of the hull so thin that no water could sip through. The mast was made out of the demon's spine and ribs, with Cassie's enchanted cloak hanged on them to serve as the sail. There was even a steering oar, fashioned out of the tip of the giant's scythe. He had expected to see a makeshift raft, but what met him was an actual vessel. Yes, it looked crude. But also strong, eerily macabre, and strangely impressive. Sailing upon the cursed sea on a boat made of demon bones. Sound like the beginning of a legend, he thought, temporarily mesmerized by the ghastly visage of the carapace vessel. Nephi's looked at him with a hint of satisfaction. Happy. Now what? Sonny gathered his thoughts. Now. As soon as he tried to think of what they had to do next, an invisible barrier appeared in his mind, blocking any attempt to continue that thought. Now we. We. No matter how hard he tried, Sonny couldn't quite remember what he wanted to do. With a scowl, he raised his hand and bit down on his mangled palm, feeling drops of blood flowing into his mouth. But even that pain did not help him destroy the barrier. Sonny smiled darkly and kneeled, placing his hand on the ground. Summoning the midnight shard, he raised his other hand and brought the pommel of the sword down without any hesitation. As the brittle bones of his ring finger shattered from the powerful strike, a wave of agony washed over his mind, obliterating the adamantine barrier. Now we get the hell out of here. Chapter 90, Nightfall Nephi stared at Sonny, shocked by his sudden act of self-mutilation. Hissing through gritted teeth, he dismissed the midnight shard and slowly rose back to his feet. Ah. Oh. Crap. That really hurts. His poor finger was red and swollen, pulsating with sharp pain. It was unmistakably broken. Sonny was so full of self-pity that he wanted to cry. Why am I so unlucky? First that nightmare in the nest, now this. How come no one else is suffering, just me? He conveniently decided to forget that Changing Star had been literally torturing herself for weeks and that due to her blindness Cassie was always covered in bruises. Hearing his pained voice, the blind girl turned her head and asked, Sonny. What happened? He grimaced and tried to smile. Ah, it's. Nothing serious, really. I just, sort of. Smashed my hand a bit. Nephi's opened her mouth to say something, but he hurriedly interrupted whatever she wanted to say. Anyway, Neff. 
Can you help me drag this gruesome masterpiece of yours to the edge of the island? At this point, one wrong question could make things very complicated. He didn't want to reveal the true purpose of his actions until the last moment. That way, he would have more leeway in how to deal with problems. Should any arise? Changing Star hesitated. A few seconds later, she shrugged, looking at him with a concerned frown. Are you sure you're okay, Sonny? He forced a smile. I will be if you help me. Giving up, she shook her head and walked over to the front of the boat. Sonny turned to Cassie. We're off, Cass. Wait here for a bit, all right. I'll come get you soon. She lingered, as though not quite understanding his words, then answered with an uncertain expression. Ah. Uh. Okay. Sonny raised his healthy hand to grip her shoulder, then hesitated and turned away with a dark look in his eyes. Enduring the pain, he walked toward the boat. Hold on a little more, Cassie. It will be over soon, I promise. The night was already approaching. Sonny and Nephi's dragged the boat across the island, pulling it as oxen yoked to a wagon. The ashen sand was not the most difficult of terrains, but the spikes on the strange vessel's hull were making the task harder. Thankfully, the boat was lighter than it looked. Sonny knew that the alloy of the demon's carapace was extremely light from his experience with the midnight shard, which was forged from the same lustrous metal. If he were to believe the sword's description, this miraculous alloy came from a shard of a fallen star. Whether this omen was good or bad, he didn't know. Soon, they heard a thundering rumble in the distance. It came from the direction of the colossal crater. The dark sea was awakening. Gritting his teeth, Sonny grabbed onto the golden rope that was coiled around his chest and pulled harder. Come on. Faster. The sun was just about to touch the horizon when they finally reached the edge of the island. Falling to his knees, Sonny released the rope and gasped for air, his chest rising and falling frantically. A wave of overwhelming exhaustion was drowning his senses, making it hard to stay awake. Not yet. You can't let go yet. Nephi's was silent, looking at him with a frown. For once, Sonny felt glad that she was weirdly taciturn by nature. Gathering his strength, he stood up and glanced at the darkening sky. Time was running out. Turning to Neff, he strained his parched throat and said in a raspy voice, I'll explain everything once Cassie is here. Don't go anywhere until I bring her, all right? Please. Changing Star stared at him for a few seconds, then shrugged with indifference and didn't say anything. I'll take it as a yes. What else could he do? Cursing under his breath, Sonny turned around and hurried away. He had one last task to accomplish before returning for Cassie. Some time later, he came back to the spot where he had left Cassie. The blind girl was still there, sitting some distance away from the carapace demon's carcass and idly staring into the ground. Hearing the sound of his approaching footsteps, she smiled weakly. Sonny. He walked over, tired to the bone, and said while trying to keep his tone casual, yeah. It's me. Cassie got distracted for a moment, then asked, do you have a fruit? I'm hungry. He flinched, then shook his head. No. Listen, we need to. I'm hungry. Do you have a fruit? Sonny stopped, looking at the blind girl with a forlorn expression. She sounded like a broken doll, repeating the same phrase over and over. Her condition wasn't good. He licked his lips. Come with me, and your hunger will disappear. This was the best misdirection he could come up with within the confines of his flaw. However, this time, he failed to achieve the desired effect. Cassie smiled and said, Really? You'll take me to the fruits. Due to his exhaustion and the debilitating effect of the enthrallment, Sonny got distracted for a moment and failed to control the flaw. Without realizing it, he opened his mouth and said, No. Cassie pouted and lowered her head, That's not nice, Sonny. Why did you lie to me? Still reeling from his mistake, Sonny missed the moment and made things even worse, turning a small oversight into a real problem. Because I want to take you away from this cursed island. As soon as the words left his mouth, Sonny froze and opened his eyes wide, refusing to believe that he had just messed up that bad. However, the damage was already done. Cassie turned to him with a deep scowl. Take me. Away. But I don't want to leave. Why would I leave the soul tree? Sonny silently cursed and shouted, 
abandoning any attempt to control himself, because that thing is evil. It's pure goddamn nightmare. Come on, let's go. Grabbing her hand, he tried to pull the delicate girl away, but she resisted with surprising strength. Let go of me, you jerk. Cassie managed to rip her hand away from his grip and flinched back, looking at Sonny with anger. I said I don't want to go. You're acting strange, Sonny. Stop, please. Sonny froze, not knowing what to do. I just. This island is our home. It's so nice here, with the three of us together. Why do you want to leave? He lingered, struggling to do what he knew had to be done. Finally, Sonny gritted his teeth and said, because it's five. Remember. I'm sorry, Cassie. Then, he lunged forward and violently grabbed the blind girl, easily suppressing her resistance. What are you doing? Stop. Help. Help. Neff. Throwing her over his shoulder, Sonny turned around and ran toward the edge of the island. Cassie resisted desperately, using her small fists to pummel his back with a rain of punches. Despite the fact that she had never taken part in battles against the nightmare creatures of the Forgotten Shore, she still was considerably stronger than a normal person. All those soul shards Changing Star had shared with her gave Cassie enough strength to make Sunny feel every strike. It wasn't enough to seriously injure him, but more than enough to hurt like hell. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, Cassie. Deeply disturbed, Sunny tried to block out Cassie's desperate screams and rushed to the boat. His forehead was covered in cold sweat. As the last glimmers of light were disappearing from the sky, he finally returned to the edge of the island. The ghastly boat was silently standing on the sand, just a few meters away from the restless black water. Changing Star was resting just in front of it, raising her head to look at the source of the commotion. Neff. Help. Sunny had gone crazy. Nephi slowly rose to her feet, her indifferent expression radiating coldness. She slightly outstretched one hand. Crap. Wait. It's not. Before he could finish the sentence, the silver sword appeared out of thin air, aimed at the ground. For now. Explain yourself. Change in Star's voice was even and calm, but Sonny could feel the hidden threat in it. Suddenly, he saw her in a new light. Or, rather, in an old one. As a potential enemy. The idea of facing off against Nephi sent chills running down his spine. He had almost forgotten the feeling he got back in the academy, watching her wipe the floor with most of the sleepers in their batch. He had forgotten that she, too, was a monster.